that recording and start that stream. Nobody Welcome to Horse It Around, a dumbass cast, uh, Game of the Year Special Edition. I am your host as always, Nick Mercadante, and with me today I have four lovely guests, if you would like to introduce yourselves. Uh, first? We, yeah, we'll I told y'all the order. I told y'all the order. <laughs> Why did you pay attention? <laughs> not to remember this. Yes, not uh, nothing's changed. Oh. Sharpened heroes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm Tori. <laughs> I'm Kobe. Uh, I'm Pat. Wait, no, I'm it's Mark. Mark first. Fuck. What? No, what? <laughs> no, it's 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 Kobe, then Mark, then me in the fucking disc Oh, Discord fuck. Oh, the fucking oh. order is screwed up in the visuals. Shit. Okay, sorry. Go, go ahead, Mark. Anyways, my name is Mark. Hello. All right, yeah. And so we have gathered here today to look back at uh, 2023 in games. Uh, I would say pretty damn good year. And I think y'all agree. We all got some pretty damn great picks. Um, that were... Best year for video games. Okay, okay, so, Mr. What, what, well, let's what, also... What? Let's also get this out of the way right now. Mr. Fucking Game of the Year animator, all right? He's, you're going to fucking say this year wasn't a good year for games. You won Game of the Year, sir. I so. Think, uh, I believe that. Mm -hmm. Play him um, off. Play him <laughs> off. <laughs> if, we're, if we're talking about games, we should talk about how they are made. And if uh, the year is not good for those who are making the games, then mm. the game year is not good. Because that means that the products are just not going to get better. Yeah, I was gonna say be best year for video game releases, but the worst year for the industry as a whole. Well, most publicized year. Like, there. Let's be real. It's it, a big part of learning about all this stuff that came out this year was in large part due to just because we're getting more visibility on it through social media and people feeling comfortable enough to come out about you know all the fucking crunchy I mean, shit. Sure, but it is also a historic year for layoffs. It's it's so. an, it is that's, that's the biggest issue. It is yeah. um. There are uh, many, many, many layoffs this year, uh, yeah. and that should be acknowledged. The, the, uh, the crunch, that's, look, man, the, cr the crunch, that's... A, a sad a, standard, excuse, really. Not <laughs> yeah. excuse, that's just the standard. <laughs> that, yeah. that, that's just how it is, you know? But it, we, said, at least we got humans crunching. <laughs> we got humans crunching. Uh, we might not have it for too much longer. Look, look, but not have for too much long. look crunch is not going to be an issue because it's <laughs> not going to be it. We're not gonna have employees to crunch. Yeah, the robots, the robots can crunch as much as they want. They'll be fine, and definitely what a no sad fucking introduction to. The yeah, <laughs> hey, listen, <laughs> but listen, <laughs> it is sad, but we are already more based than Jeff Keeley for at least talking yeah, about true. this at all. Well, so we're we already games, on. So that's why we're talking about it. We are we already games, a better games, games of the year discussion good. than the Game Awards. So we're gonna <laughs> take that one in stride. Um, yeah. But to talk about some actual games, I'm going to knock out my, my number three pick right off the bat, um, which was honestly a little difficult because I didn't play that many 2023 games this year. Um, but it was between Hi-Fi Rush and Super Mario Wonder. Um, but I ended up playing more, slightly more Super Mario Wonder than Hi-Fi Rush in the end. Um, and I just loved... Like, I'm not even a big Mario guy. I kind of suck at most of the 2D Marios that I've played. Um, but it's just so pretty and charming. And, in a, like, the design decisions are just fucking, like, so creative. Basically, you can see in every level how they've taken inspiration from, like, all of the creativity that came out of, like, the Mario Maker games. And then just, you know, pump that up to 11 because they have, like, the in-house talent to, like you know, really step it up. And so, like, every level has two, basically two routes, two two different levels in each level based on, like, using the Wonder Seeds. Um, and it's it's fucking crazy. I, I, I love it. And, and the multiplayer aspect of it, where basically you're always playing with ghosts of other players that can help you out, is such a neat way to do multiplayer um, that I, I really enjoyed it. And it, you know, I, I don't, I, just, I mean, I haven't been looking at games news that recently, but, like, I feel like a lot of more people... It, like, a lot more people should try it. it it's, you know, it's locked to the Switch, so not everybody has it. But, like, if you got it, you should you should check out the, the new Mario game. It is fucking... Mwah, chef's kiss. So, it's such that's... a good game. Oh, yeah. As soon as, I, as soon as I started it up and I started playing it, I was like, I'm 100% in this game. 100, like... I, yeah. When I find the time, I'm I'm going back and I'm getting every fucking Wonder Seed, like, just 
scouring those levels because there's so fucking much and there's so many hidden details and like and everything so you cool. find it feels like you know really like a good achievement to like find all the shit they <clears throat> they stuffed in there but uh yeah that's my number three thing so um how about you tori what you got uh for my number three pick mm -hmm. hmm I guess my number three pick's probably going to be Storyteller, which is like a puzzle adventure game. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of the way it works, I, I won't spoil too, or I won't spoil any of the puzzles, but basically you get the title of a story and you get however many panels, usually six, to drag and drop characters and scenes in order to make that title happen. And it's pretty cool to see like how different situations, or how many different situations you can make. And there's usually only a couple of solutions that get you to the right title. And it's just, it's game design, very good. Flexibility of, like, like the system that they've built underneath the game, very good. Yeah. And, I don't know, it, it's cute. I think it took me, like, three or four hours to complete the game. And it was, it was good. Yeah. Just very, and... It's very polished. <laughs> yeah, short and sweet and, and very pretty and, like you said, very flexible from the little bit that I played of it um mm -hmm. is it is it mobile only or is it on no it's desktop? on i played it first on steam and then it's also a mobile game through netflix right um, yes i yeah, saw that I netflix about. logo pop up and i was like what the fuck yeah i was uh, yeah. on netflix and on my phone and then it was like play some of these games and i was like i i know these games why are they on netflix <laughs> <laughs> is it but like nice is the so like do all the solutions like makes sense for storyteller like the way like the way you do it is like you add stuff to the panels to make it make a story make sense do like are were there like a lot of times where like you tried to put stuff that you thought would make sense but it didn't actually work or did it all seem pretty pretty good at it sometimes there's things that i was like i feel like this should work but they are really good at having consistency with all of the characters that you can drag and drop it's a little bit more in-depth than it at first appears, where each character usually has their own motivations and preferences towards how they would solve certain issues. Okay. Um, and the game does really well to kind of stay within those pre-established constraints that you learn over the course of the puzzles. Okay. So, like, there's this one character... There, there's, like, two main female characters that recur in a lot of the romance scenes, um, and one of them is perfectly willing to kill the other girl if given even the mildest of reasons to do so. Whereas <laughs> the other should. girl will not result to murder unless she's been cheated on. Oh man, I didn't even get this far in the game. That sounds yeah, not, not yeah. forbid women do anything, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's start. Let's start supporting women's wrongs uh, in the new year. You know, if you really want to be supportive, you'd support both. <laughs> it's from Annapurna Interactive, mm -hmm. which does. They have a lot of good games. What is uh, Stray Neon White? Uh, yeah. Finch, Outer Wilds Journey. Uh, and, yeah, no, it's just Polar a Ash. solid. A Annapurna to me is be quickly becoming like the A twenty four video games, where oh it's like God. you you know like the quality that you're getting into. You're right, you're right, but I hate <laughs> that you're describing it like that. <laughs> but I you're right. To describe. No, it. I know, I know. You're right. But I it's... haven't played any of those games, but I every time like legitimately haven't played any of those games, but people. Keep telling me to play them. It's a lot of short and sweet stuff, but like oh, super shit. well polished. Usually, they made Florence and Twelve Minutes too. Those mm -hmm. are also minute, two just great Twelve Minutes was games. great. Yeah, Twelve yeah. Minutes was great. Their bundle is five hundred and thirty dollars on Steam. Holy <laughs> of fuck! All the games that they I'm going home. <laughs> Jesus. And what remains of Edith Finch? Oh my God! Yeah, it's fucking. Yeah, this is what I just said, Tori. <laughs> You're right. I didn't hear. <laughs> my bad. Wow, Tori, kind of fucked up. Right. All right. So that's your number three pick. Uh, Kobe, what you got? Yeah, so for my number three pick, uh, for a bit it was going to be Spider-Man. But then the last week of December, I decided to start a new game. And it fucking blew me away. And that is Lies of P. Uh, Lies of P is the best Souls-like that isn't a From Software title that I've played. For this, this is this team's first ever game. <laughs> uh, and they knocked it out of the park. They really took the concept of what a souls game is and absolutely nailed it i they i don't even know where to begin first off having the pinocchio story be the basis of a dark souls game was super intriguing and then taking that and just making it full steampunk having this bioshock like art almost where it's very bioshock-esque going through 
set amongst a Dark Souls gameplay. And just having it be as refined as it is has been a joy to play. Uh, the the enemy design is great. The boss design is great. It's everything that you want from a Dark Souls game. But they also have like a few tricks up its sleeve where like mm -hmm. the game has an incredible weapon customization system where uh, <clears throat> whatever weapon, normal weapons you get throughout the game, it comes with a, a head and a handle. And then if you like how a certain weapon swings but you like the damage buffs of another head you can like oh. inter swap all of the weapons and like make your own unique customizations mm. plus you can go and you can alter the handles of the weapon to start buffing to certain stats so like in dark souls you have your dex or strength build mm -hmm. and your we the weapon is usually locked to one or the other Yep. This is, you can take that weapon, you can completely change the stats that it's building towards to. Uh, and it's just, it's really accessible. And the other thing that I think Lies of P does extremely well is in its story department. With any From Software game, I'm consistently battling the game to <laughs> consume a story. <laughs> uh, if I want to understand what anything is in the Souls game, I have to actively fight the game. Lies of P... Uh, generously gives you the story uh, you don't have to fight for it it will tell you the story and it's good uh it is a pretty good story for a souls game and it's, it's just very nice uh, i am at the end of the game and i highly recommend anyone playing lies of p if you have any interest in a souls game like if you were to slap from software on the box you wouldn't know the difference wow i That's would crazy. like to jump in and quickly say that uh it was not their first game. They actually, both companies worked on a uh, MMO uh, previously. Mm -hmm, gotcha. Uh, okay. uh, it, it wasn't a huge MMO. It was, uh, I think, called um, Bless Unleashed, uh, mm. which uh, was not an MMO that was on my radar, but it uh, did come out in 2020. Um, I don't know okay. why, but I, I expected was just looking you to... At the developer in Neo Wiz, and I know they published a lot. I just couldn't really find what this team developed. Neo uh, Wiz, um helped round eight who also made lies of p uh neo gotcha. was in round eight worked on lies of p together and they both worked <clears> on uh bless unleash i don't know if uh, i think round eight was at the no neo was also like published bless unleash uh, just a minor also the game has multiple endings you it is choice based uh because you are pinocchio and basically it is uh do you want to lie or tell the truth throughout the game and, oh my uh, god yeah whoa but whoa. Yeah, it like, changes the world around you and like how characters interact and like location like some locations are locked off unless if you lie oh. uh, it's do you want to become a real boy <laughs> it, is like the story and plus like well it's also Japan like you're hunted. you're the only robot that can lie right you are you are like a robotic yeah the, thing. the puppets the have gone thing. insane and geppetto feels guilty for it <laughs> it's really cool oh. i have a question <clears throat> Yeah. Can I download a mod that turns the main guy into Timothy Chalamet? <laughs> this will What do you mean a What do you mean a mod that's in the base game? Like, what do you want about? Yeah, he already looks like, this looks like this looks like a already... little femme Timothy Chalamet. I want I want Timothy Chalamet. <laughs> and listen. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but Liza P does have a few annoyances Point to F it hits that, again. Uh I think could be fixed later on or with their next patch or whatever. And the biggest annoyance with the game is it doesn't have poise. Uh, basically, you can get hit out of your attacks very easily. And it and heavy swing builds are kind of... You shouldn't do it. <laughs> so, Brother, I don't know how to tell you this. That just okay. kind of sounds to me like a skill issue. So... Good point. Good point. I don't know. Mm. But, uh, all right, after that, we got uh, Mark. What you, what you got for your, your third pick? Okay, I'm next. Uh, so for my third, I, I guess I don't really have a game, but I do have the God of War Ragnarok DLC. A game's uh, worth of content, some might say. A, yeah, a, a Modern Warfare game's worth of content. Uh, <laughs> it's, around, uh, it's not, it's not too long. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I guess it kind of, um, it's, it's kind of cheating because it builds upon, like, what they've made for God of War. Yeah. But, uh, Listen, if Miles uh, Morales, like if Spider-Man Miles Morales can count as his own game in 22 or whatever, th this yeah. Ragnarok game seems like it has enough about as much. Well, so. <laughs> I, I actually don't, I don't know. It's a, um, basically the idea is that you are uh, going through, uh, you're, you're going with Kratos to work through 
um, some Wait, of his past <laughs> and trying to uh, Wait, Kratos to goes to therapy? Is that what this is? Yeah, it is. It is <laughs> quite literally Kratos goes to therapy. Whoa! Um, you get to see a bunch of cool stuff from the other games. You get to see kind of how uh, you get to see a, get a better kind of view of who Kratos is as a person. And as a person who didn't play that much of the first three God of War game, God of War games, it actually um, led me to be super interested in like the path that he took for those three games. So like playing this made me want to like watch the first three games. And so mm -hmm. I did. And like, um, it's really cool seeing uh, kind of the, the issues that they go through in the game. Uh, I, God of War is going to be like, it got to be like one of like my favorite story game of all time just in general yeah uh and so any continuation of that is going to be at like one of my favorite games of all time and so this um this was really fun i really like the roguelike part of it i mean i play a lot of roguelite um, <laughs> oh, like yeah. that's what i do so mm -hmm. i uh i don't know it was it's hard that you can you can make this game hard as hell <laughs> um and it's already pretty it's not, hard by default most of the time. It's not super, super deep in terms of the different kind of builds that you can make, but there is a bunch, there is some new content. Uh, and, I mean, mastering the fighting style of God of War Ragnarok is kind of hard to do in the first place. Yeah. Uh, I mean, God of War is hard they to do. Don't, they don't so give you hard. a new weapon to fuck with, right? You still, it's, it's still just a three? They give you a new fear, a new... Um, What's it called? Rage. They do give you a new rage. Okay. Okay. That's um, that's cool. And I can't I can't say more than that, but it is really cool, and it is based off of something in his past, so that's cool. Nice. Um, yeah. 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 I think it works really well with all the new like the three weapon fighting that they introduced in, um, in the last game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to it. I'm planning on replaying Ragnarok at some point on top of all the other fucking games from the last year I need to catch up on, some of which we're going to be talking about. But I want to do a video on, on some parts of, of Ragnarok's story. Um, and I want I to... I bought the first one for Reese to play. See what, uh, yeah, see what this DLC is all about. It's It sounds dope. And, but I guess it's it only it only doesn't get any higher for you, I, I presume, because it's, it's only... There's only so much of it. If there was more, probably... If it was a full yeah. game, but I'm I'm gonna be jonesing for more of this story at any point, and I really hope that like eventually we get an announcement that something's coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, but we gotta we gotta let them cook. Something's coming. We do. Yeah. I I just I don't know. Like I, every time I get on my computer, I'm like, damn, I want to play like a a good story based game, and I'm like, I want to play a God of War type game, and I'm like, <laughs> I just want to play God of War kind of. Listen, like, listen, Hades, Hades two is coming out this year, right? You got that mm -hmm. to look forward to. It's got the rogue like, and it's got the that, story. It hits different parts of me. Like God, <laughs> God of War hits like emotional parts of me, while uh, Hades like, hits horny Hades parts hits of me. Bisexual <laughs> parts of me. <laughs> <laughs> Very bisexual parts. The same, the, the, the same story, like, if you want story, Red Dead 2 hit me the same as God of War did. Like, Red Dead 2 was one of the best stories in gaming that I've ever experienced. A man <sighs> like me cannot tap A to run, Kobe. I, it, 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 it legitimately takes me out of every Rockstar game. Just rebind the I controls. hate it so much. No, but you, what, that's, you built in, that's a built-in mechanic. Run? Yeah, it's no. a built-in mechanic to tap to run. You, you can hold. Tap to you, run can hold. So much. You, you can it's hold. It's gotta a. be an accessibility option. There's it's no so way, petty. right? No, I'm considering there's not. Rockstar's development types, like how fucking old their like mission design is. No, I wouldn't. I don't think so. <laughs> I know it's Aww. petty. I just fucking hate it. I really do hate. Uh, tapping I mean, something listen, like I I'm kind of in the same boat as far as like I want to pick up Red Dead Re Redemption Two multiple like again and again because I did start it, but then I keep putting it down for ages. I don't want to have to learn the controls again every time. I have to stare at the fucking controls menu for like 15 minutes <laughs> when I put Why that game back on. Now so that weird. sounds like a skill issue. Apparently <laughs> on PC, it's terrible. Like oh. the controls for PC base are terrible. That's like. Using a controller. Listen, it's, Dark Souls. The controls on PC are fine. I actually really like playing at least Red Dead on PC because then I can like aim with my mouse. Mm. Yeah, that, oh, that's my kind of my thing with Rockstar games. It's like I play with the controller, and then if I have to shoot a gun, I switch over to my mouse immediately. <laughs> I just sit the I sit at the computer with both. That's fucking incredible. 
Um, all right, but uh, yeah, so uh, that was Mark's number three. How about you, Pat? What you got? So for my games, um, I figured <clears throat> I would also lend some light to some fun indie hits. Let me start my timer real quick. Uh, I, I got you what recently too. came out for me was a phenomenal game called Shadows of Doubt, where you play as the greasiest motherfucker in Lego City. Um, it's a sandbox stealth detective game uh you play as a pretty much the only person who cares about solving crimes in a procedurally generated city and it generates everyone's like um schedules everyone's like sleeping patterns jobs names their locations their addresses it's like a set block like a set block of like i think like uh nine by nine like actual like city blocks with like fully built out and fleshed out like apartments and stuff that you have to like then piece together for randomly generated murders that occur um and these murders just happen uh because say like uh a husband has like um beef with like a wife who's cheating on him or something like that and it disrupts all of these like different um patterns that like are generated already and you have to sort of like chase down this like butterfly effect of like someone getting killed um for example like early on uh i had to fucking solve uh this guy's murder um and i found out like where he liked going to eat what his job was what his fucking shoe size was what his fucking prints were and i had to like collate all of this fucking like data onto my shitty little like detective board and on top of all of that bullshit on top of solving this shitty ass little crime of this fucking guy getting murdered for some fucking reason because i think he didn't pay his fucking bar tab I had to figure out um, when I could take a shower because I would sometimes get too stinky to sneak into a place <laughs> and the fucking cops would sniff me out, literally sniff me out because I was a smelly little rat man. Yeah. I was digging through this guy's trash and I found a hot dog and I was kind of hungry and I took his beer too and I threw the beer at the wall and I ate the hot dog and I smelled like shit. Why did you throw the beer at the wall? Because I could. Okay. Fair. <laughs> but the beer at the wall triggered simulator. the, the beer, me, but me throwing the beer at the wall caused someone to hear it and caused someone to call the cops on me which honestly was my mistake anyway all i have to say is it's like if you gave me uh a fucking moron the power to be batman um <laughs> and i don't know how to solve crimes but somehow i figured out that the guy who killed this person was the uh, was his friend who wanted his money or some shit and he owed the borrower this money and I locked his friend up and I think I was actually wrong honestly <laughs> I think I was wrong I after sure all I that wrong. I think I was wrong that's great was wrong, work, the, brother. Yeah. but the cops took him in anyway a true a true <laughs> member of the police state <laughs> it's a it is a phenomenal but uh, it is a phenomenal sandbox <laughs> and it, so Jerry. much and it really um it really grabs the feeling of being a greasy little detective, mm. uh, a little rat of a man, super well. Like, mm. you're one one second, you'll be, like, investigating a uh, crime scene. The next second, you'll be digging through trash. And the next second, you'll be crawling through vents to try to eavesdrop on a conversation so that you could, like, pin a crime on somebody. Uh, and you could just be wrong. And that's, I think, the best <laughs> part of the game is that you could just be wrong. Yeah. Like, it- um... You can do this in real life, by the way. <laughs> you could do this in real life. If you stick you to minorities, you could you could do this in real life. Yeah. yeah. It, it sounds like to me, have you heard of um Dwarf Fortress before, Pat? Yes. Oh, yeah. God, I love Dwarf so, Fortress. Yeah. Okay. So so yeah, yeah, like the procedural generation sounds mm-hmm. very akin to Dwarf Fortress, where they have like a lot of well thought out systems that can uh, yeah. can handle all these different circumstances very fluidly. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. which is super impressive to like see in action um and yeah that sounds that sounds really yeah, fucking cool it very much is along that vibe of uh just internet interconnected webs of bullshit that mm-hmm. uh cre- generates a story and i uh i cannot recommend this greasy little detective simulator enough mm-hmm. um oh and a fun fun little addition that they added recently uh for those of you who, that stream they added twitch integration where Whoa. they'll scrape, make your twitch chat uh, and so you'll have chatters committing murders on each other, and you'll have to solve who the fucking chatters are that killed the person. <laughs> that's really oh, cool. that's fucking dope. Thanks that's for the six lives, Murky's best fan. 
Thanks for six lives. Nope. Uh, six gifted bombs. <laughs> six, in six shadows murder. of doubt. In shadows of doubt. <laughs> in shadows of doubt. <laughs> oh man. Hell yeah. Well, that sounds can't fucking dope. Of, can't recommend shadows of doubt enough. Uh, look into it for, for streaming stuff. Um, but yeah, all right. So for going back to me for my second pick, honestly, my top two can kind of swap between each other, but I'm probably just going to put this in the second place because I haven't touched it recently. And so maybe that's a sign that it can be knocked out more. But it's also a single player game, so and it has a definitive ending. It's Tears of the Kingdom, uh, which is the only single player narrative from that came out this year that I actually finished. Um, and I started it with the fucking, uh, subathon that I was doing and, uh, just kept chugging at it, uh, far, far after that ended because I don't know, it's just like, it has all the things you, you know, everybody loved about Breath of the Wild and then just added more shit, more exploration, um, more, just more activities, more, like, I love being in that world. It's, it's a beautiful place to be. It's, it's like, you know lovingly crafted the little details like you learn the little stories about the people running around in it as you go around um and like just everything feels like it was done with love and i know as, you know in the months since the game came out that's the thing that was so surprising because like when that game came out it felt like that was such a lock for a game of year the the year contender but afterwards so many other good games came out and like it also felt like there was like a, an un, like a a rising trend of like criticizing it more and more as like the second iteration and like I do agree with a lot of the criticisms that were you know leveled at this game as far as like um stuff stuff being uh not fleshed out enough like the uh, the overworld and the underworld um not having as much as like the ground level and um you know, having a lot of bare spots in it. But, like, even just the act of navigating the Sky Plains, I think, was an activity in itself that I found a lot of enjoyment in. Um, and so, like, you know, even with those criticisms, it still is, like, just, I think, a masterclass in, in game design and making these systems, you know, talking, again, about, like, fluid systems that can work with, um, you know, players... Uh, trying to fuck with it and break it, you know, and making all the, you know, giving them the tools to make all of these wild ass machines that were going all over TikTok when the game came out. And I will never, I will never get close to achieving uh, without looking up any guides for, but, you know, just like having the option to do that kind of stuff was, was super fun to incorporate and build on the um, mechanics that they had from the first game. So I think it still holds up, um, all things aside, and yeah, so that's that's my second pick. I don't know. You, have you guys all played it by this point? Yes. I, no, yes. but yeah. I saw one of my friends, one of my friends, she made a fucking steam engine in mm -hmm. Breath of the Wild that got some traction on Twitter. It was mm. fucking insane. Yeah. Because she, she's, like, super into fucking, like, old-timey engines and stuff, and, like, she literally got it, like pumping and like fucking uh doing all like the fucking like gear shifting and stuff i think she started making like a mecha too at one point oh yeah they, there are people who've made mechas in, in two yeah. kingdom so like yeah it was an engineer made, like, an sandbox mm -hmm. there's somebody who made like an apache helicopter or something <laughs> yeah the flying oh, machines yeah. are so the fucking cool drones oh my oh, god some crazy. of the hardest i've ever laughed at a game this year sorry mm -hmm. it is seeing the face of link get grabbed by those fucking like tent like the the machine arm things and me just like j i just bust out laughing it's hilarious <laughs> i not where i thought it was gonna go uh, and it didn't end up where i thought it was gonna go but it was funny as hell the entire time i oh, love yeah. that game it's great oh yeah i i don't <clears throat> i don't really like uh one of the powers mm -hmm. um for me, it was the last power, and it's also kind of awkward to use. I don't like. I'm trying to remember the, which the, one the, that is. The, the, the robot. Oh, the robot. Yeah, um, yeah. I really, I don't, I don't really like that, and I didn't use the fuse abilities as much as I really like thought I was going to. I didn't really make many Zonai devices in my. Yeah, era. which I think was like the like a criticism levied at it is this is like a lot of these puzzles. They're designed for accessibility so that they they have an intended solve, and that usually is the easiest thing to do. But, like, 
I don't know. There's, that's the same way it was for the temples in the last game. I, I guess some people, like, I, I saw some criticism of people not enjoying a lot of, like, having to do all these shrines to, like, help level up and stuff. But, like, I love that oh, shit. That I love the puzzles, like, yeah, a ton. Yeah. And even if it was the simplest solution or if I find a, found, like, a new busted way to do it, um, you know, I was I having fun with it. smarter than but, me. Yeah, true. I thought Tears of the Kingdom was such an improvement over Breath of the Wild. Uh, I may be in like the I am a I'm in the camp of I like Breath of the Wild. I don't love it. I think I had a lot left to be desired with that game. I wasn't as impressed as everyone else, but Tears of the Kingdom did like really hit for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think my my biggest like compliment to this game, which was my biggest gripe with Breath of the Wild, is the world actually felt alive this time. There was a lot of quests to do, whether that be good quests or just like oh fetch quests. Like I still was consistently running into stuff. I still felt like I was meeting a lot of characters, a lot of stories, yeah. and I thought the powers were more interesting in Tears of the Kingdom than in Breath of the Wild. I had more fun with them, just kind of designing stuff and being able to fuse. And I definitely thought the shrines in this one stood out a lot more than Breath of the Wild because I think Breath of the Wilds is a very rinse and repeat. Like once you do like eight of them, you kind of see what the game has to offer. Tears of the Kingdom, I felt like was consistently different. It felt a little bit more handcrafted for each one of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. I definitely do. I definitely think the Sky Islands had a lot left to be desired, but I thoroughly oh, yeah. enjoyed the underground. Uh, I thought the the underground was a good one for one with mm-hmm. the 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 mid the mid layer yeah. um and yeah and i thought the the one thing that don't doesn't get talked about enough but this story was actually generally good for a zelda game and the cinematics in this one absolutely popped off the yeah. the art direction in them uh was just incredible to look at there is one cutscene that i do think about from time to time again where it they, it just involves a dragon and it's mm-hmm. one of the, the prettiest yeah, looking yeah. cutscenes in the entire game yeah uh and so yeah tears of the kingdom popped off but it yeah it is crazy like there's just that, there's just so what? much the Sky islands did really fucking suck now that i think about it i was really totally really totally in the minority where that was one of my favorite parts of the game i also I like the sky I islands flying. i like, I like flying. flying yeah <clears throat> Building flying like machines no, and going around. I felt like fun. it had no purpose. Like I just did not like find myself wanting to go up there. Yeah, I mean, I just, <laughs> so I just like, so I just like discovering place, shit, but... like flying around, I'm discovering new places. No. <laughs> All right, uh, but yeah, speaking of the the uh, uh, other other games that that are even that, that were pushing pushing Tears of Kings <laughs> down on people's lists, uh, Tori, what's your what's your second pick? Oh, man. I mean, I don't know if this was anywhere near a primary reason why that happened, but I still think this is one of the best games that I've played to date in terms of just, like, polish and general enjoyment level for the session that I did. Slay the Princess is a visual novel that came out this year, and goddamn, that was just a very well-written story, and I have probably not even seen a quarter of it, um, considering how, like... (laughs) How many different things, how many options you can do. Every choice felt like it had a genuine consequence. Yeah. Um, I mean, the game makes you play a certain percentage of it, but, like, you, yeah, we de- we definitely missed out on a good number of endings. Yeah, I think we, mi- we missed out on many endings. We missed out on a lot of different scenarios that could happen. Um, and overall, like, no, I think no matter what direction you play, it's just you get a good, complete story. The voice acting is incredible. The like the sketchy ink art style, the like, very hand drawn, is yeah. beautiful. Um, and they just make the char- characters character so <laughs> expressive. Like it's just such a good game. I yeah. think what we played for like six hours for a single playthrough. I think less than even I, like it wasn't that, four I, or five. Yeah, something like that. Pretty pretty short overall, but. Like it, it's yeah. it felt longer, but in a good way. Like it felt like we were you were getting so much out of it, and like it it made it makes you think. Like it asked thought provoking questions that were that were well delivered, and, and yeah, made I us, mean, like, like we had to stop we, playing. We probably like thirty minutes. Yeah, to argue. we we probably did end up going to around six hours of playtime just to like discuss the morality and like the the theory of like you know whatever was being discussed and you know you gotta play it for yourself to to see what we're talking about really because it's yeah it's all spoilers, i will, I will say all the title slay the princess is a large portion of the game and i don't want to tell you anymore because that question has a lot of different answers <laughs> well it's not a question right. tori it's a statement i have a question you just slay her oh, easy 
for for like eight. So it's eighteen bucks on Steam right now. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's that's a pretty. I'd say that's a pretty steep for a visual novel, right? That's that's where it, like a make or break for me. It's, it's worth like it. close it's to worth fifteen. It. It's worth yeah. it. Is that no, it's yeah. worth it's it? Worth it. For the amount of yeah. for the for the again the the style and the delivery and the discussions we were able to have because of it, like I would say that's worth it. I mean, yeah. To me, like the most I've ever paid for visual novel was thirty, and it was for Doki Doki, the remastered or whatever. And oh, Doki yeah. Doki, I remember the night. <laughs> And she kept looking at me, and I'm like, this game is boring. Why am I sitting here for three hours? And then it hit. I'm like, oh. <laughs> I, you know, honestly, it's also I'll like, look at this one. That's my like, Doki Doki experience. Y'all mm, fucked me up with that mm-hmm, shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, and it's, I, you should play Slay the Princess, because it's going to, I think it'll hit harder, to, to be honest. Like, right. I feel like Doki Doki relies a lot on shock factor. Um, and Slay the Princess is just a good story. It's great. Yeah. Um, and I think, like, we're kind of in this, like, game culture of, like, I'll pay $60 for the next Call of Duty game, even though I have, like, 15 others that are almost exactly the same. I'm not a Call of Duty gamer. Maybe that's not true. But that's my impression. Um, but I would say $15 for a game that's as well-polished as this is, it, it, it's, it's very good. I think it's a pretty good price. Um, also, the studio makes Scarlet Hollow, which is another very good visual novel. Um, though I do think Slay the Princess is better. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Um, so uh, moving on to Kobe, what's your what's your second pick for game of the year? Yeah, uh, this one was a January release, and it has stuck with me the entire time. Over break, I just completed it two more times because uh, I find myself returning to this game a lot. And I know there's always contention with conversations of whether or not a remake should be in the conversation for a game oh, of the year. But Dead Space Remake absolutely blew me away. I loved Dead Space when it first came out on the 360, and when they were remaking it, I was ecstatic. This is exactly what a remake should be. It took just the original concept and completely expanded upon the game. The original game was very limited because of its resources, and this totally just visual, like makes it its full vision. Mm-hmm. I, I know this is such a cliche thing, but they made... Finally, the Ishimura, its own character, the ship that you are on. And the game is one continuous uh, uh, cutscene. Like, there's no breaks like God of War. Like, it's one continuous mm-hmm. thing. There's, it is, uh, si- like, just seamless loading. This game also adds, like, four new side quests. It completely expands the Ishimura. It refines the gameplay. It gives the main character a voice, which he th- he was voiceless in the first game. Oh, yeah. Like Dead Space 2. It completely just... Uh, makes the horror aspect of it even scarier like the game is fucked up like and they really just hone in on it i know resident evil 4 remake came out this year but i thought dead space remake was so much more impressive than resident evil 4 i think both achieved what they were trying to do which is like taking the core concept but resident evil 4 played it a little bit more safely where like they didn't really add anything they stuck to the core core gameplay but cut some stuff Mm -hmm. from the story whereas dead space remake legitimately added to the game and just expanded upon what that original version was and if you have any interest in horror games dead space should be a must play because i think it's a master class in sci-fi horror like just even though i knew what was coming just the feelings i got from the original i got in this one again like just seeing for the first time like like cut off the limbs and like you grab your plasma cutter and you have to just start blasting through these gnarly like body horror creatures and having to shoot off the limbs and it is just one of the most satisfying horror games to play. And like I said, if you have any interest in the horror genre, Dead Space Remake is a must. It is the definitive way to experience it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I played I played the original for the first time um, was the beginning of the last year, the beginning of the year before. One of those two. I think it was I think it was 2022. Um, but like uh, I mentioned you're saying like they've added so much more stuff to it, so I'm interested to see see how it evolves. I mean, yeah, the issue more is like full open world now. Like it, you can explore it, the entire thing in one go. Like and it adds things where like you have to get security clearances now. There's more rooms to explore, and now uh, when you go out to zero G, there's many more sections where it's full uh, flying around, like the Dead Space Two. Like you can oh, fly around the ship. Yeah, you can yeah. fly around the outside. Like there is just so many more sections to this game. Uh, then, awesome. yeah. yeah, I recommended it to Mark, and I, I, he started to play and loved it, and then fell off. <laughs> so cool, but yeah, all right. 
Uh, Mark, what you got for uh, second second favorite game of the year? All right. My second of the year. Sorry, one second. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my second of the year is a game that like I didn't hear many people talk about. But I really had such an amazing time playing this game. Um, is Jedi Survivor? I, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I haven't watched. I've watched like half of the Star Wars movies. Like I haven't watched the first three. I've watched. What? Uh, what? Wait. What? Kobe, which on, ones have I watched? He, he, Chronologically, he, he, or no? He has only seen A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back. Oh, okay. Okay. Never movies. mind then. Okay. I've okay. Only seen two of the two of those, and then all of the new ones. Okay. Um, and gotcha. what uh, I missed, I missed all the cool Star Wars shit when I was a little kid. I did play um, Star Wars Force Unleashed though. And oh yeah, that was where that was my first introduction into anything Star Wars was uh, playing Star Wars Force Unleashed one and two. That's a and fun. You, think, you're peaking a little early with Force Unleashed there. I Holy know, shit! I I think that uh, like no game has made me feel like that. Until it was until this new run of the mm. the Jedi Fallen Order and Jedi Survivor games, I love them so much. Mm. Um, you, you can see a trend where I really like the story based uh, story based single player games, but I um, like the RPGs. But yeah, I love yeah. Jedi Survivor. It felt so fun to fly around, um, learn new stuff about the world, um, get like little spoilers for the movies that I haven't seen yet. And not know what the fuck it's talking about. <laughs> uh, I love like I the combat's really fun. I love all the new different stances that you get with it. So you have like the um, the new like pistol blaster stance and being able to have multiple stances so you can switch between the two. Yeah, like being able to like I can have like a full like staff bow staff with uh, with the lightsabers and then pull them apart and do two handed uh, like two handed two sabers. Yeah. Uh it's sick. Oh my god. The game is really fun. Uh the bosses are a little easy. I, I wouldn't say that like most of the fun is in like the bosses and things like that. Mm -hmm. But I think uh exploring the world and getting to just see everything in Jedi Survivor, it felt like a lot. <laughs> I love this game. Yeah. Yeah. No, they Go ahead, sorry, go ahead, yeah, yeah, no, Jedi Survivor is incredible. I ended up hundred percent hundred percenting that game. I got all the achievements in it. Uh I definitely think, like, me, I am a Star Wars nerd. It is one of the best Star Wars ex stories I've experienced. And then, like, the last act of that game really had me doing pog face the entire time because <laughs> they pull shit from the EU and they start incorporating it into this game. I'm like, oh, my God, I know that, I know that. <laughs> and then, like, it, it takes some turns that I did not expect and I'm happy with the turns that they are taking. Mm -hmm. I think the reason why people don't talk about this game, I got I written off so early on, is just because of the botched launch. Unfortunately, that game came out with such performance issues and bugs that a lot of people are like damn this game is incredible but it's also not incredible <laughs> so yeah. i i think it is very it's worth it i think it is an incredible star wars game as well yeah especially since now because i played on playstation <laughs> I, for some reason i just i never run into issues like that yeah yeah um yeah i it's it's very high on my list and now all of, like the issues on pc are hopefully resolved so um, we'll finish it murky i i need to i need to i might i might drop the difficulty from jedi master because god that one outpost fucking on the first planet like kicked my ass so many times but uh, you're fine um, I'm just continue. I'll, 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 will be. It's very high on the list. For like, it's. I'm fighting between restarting Ragnarok or, or fucking <laughs> playing Jedi it's Survivor. Nice Jedi Survivor, then go to Ragnarok. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but, um, but yeah, I, I definitely want to give it another shot. And so there is Ragnarok. one boss fight in that game. I do because I had it on Grandmaster as well. I do think there is one boss fight in that game that is legitimately hard, but I can't say who it is because it's spoilers. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah. Oh yeah, I, fuck that bitch. That shit was hard as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you're talking about. Fuck that. You there's know. one boss fight in the game that is really fucking hard. <laughs> it shit is hard just, as hell. It, there's, uh... just, there's two massive difficulty spikes in the game. One's an optional boss and one is a real boss. <laughs> oh boy. I love oh, that. Oh fuck both of the bosses you're talking about. I'm 
that part, I'll message I, you, you know on how Discord. Long I fought <laughs> that guy. That I know you kept. You kept. About. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> if you know, you know. But uh, Pat, what's your uh, what's your second your second best game of the year? So I actually kind of fucked up. Uh, well, I didn't really fuck up that bad. Um, so I have a couple of picks for my second game. Uh, okay. First, I want to give a shout out to uh, Another Crab's Treasure, which I played the demo for, and that shit was a banger. Oh, um, I love it's that. It's from... Uh, it's the Agro Crab guys, right? Yeah, yeah it people? is from Agro Crab. Uh, they... Uh, I'm a little biased because I have some friends on that team and, uh, you know, it's just, a, but it's a phenomenal, um, it's a phenomenal little, uh, Dark Souls like game, uh, with fun little, uh, mechanics, like with the shells and with like the different like movement types and stuff like that. You get a grappling hook, like Sekiro. It's cool. It's a cool little game that I'm excited for later this year. Um, next, uh, I was in between really two games for my like second favorite game of like game of the year. Um, I listed one because I played it more, but. The other one uh, that I didn't list was Trapang 2. It's a fear-like Doom uh, fucking, like... It's so good. It's a banger first-person shooter. Very ultra-kill, very fast arc arcade movement. Um, you get to fucking dual-wield, like, grenade launchers. It is beautiful. <laughs> the animations are phenomenal. It's such... One, uh it's th this is one of like the reviews that i saw for it but like it's when they say that Auto video Border. games cause um make cause people to be more violent this is the game that causes people to be more violent <laughs> it is such a fun blast of a game i love this so much i got a physical copy he oh. got a physical oh. copy he went it's physical for the shelf um <laughs> if you like half-life if you like fear if you like first person shooters in general if you take adderall uh play this game <laughs> It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. But okay. on the but. flip side, um, the game that I picked for my second game of the year is Your Only Move is Hustle. Oh uh, my god. That very, came out this year? Game. Yep. It came out this year. Really? Oh. Man, I feel like I've heard you guys like Wait. going at that shit I since lied. last year. Now I can't use it for my fucking game wow. of the year. It apparently it came out the end of it came out the end of next uh, last year. I'm this sorry. And I guess seven he's different a liar. Games in his second game. He's a liar. Game. He's <laughs> lying. <laughs> he's cheating. <laughs> DM <laughs> cheating <laughs> once again. I'm cheating. I'm cheating. Uh then he's it has to go so to Chipang 2. They're not All right, Chipang 2, number 2 pick. All right. Let's go to Peng too. Uh, it's a it's a banger first person shooter. It has so many fun like uh, so many fun moments. Really, like the moment to moment gameplay is some of the most like. Does it have like set piece moments? Like, or uh, is it? It just... does, but it's really the individual fights and encounters that you have. So a lot of the mechanics are based around movement and shooting. You can't even aim down the sights because that's not a part of the game. <laughs> Aiming down the sights is not a part of the game. Ah, you nice. Shoot. You click yeah. on shit, you move around, you do slides, you... So uh, you, one might say this is a in the vein of boomer shooters with, with a nice oh, yeah. shiny coat Absolutely. of paint. Go, if you've Absolutely. played Fear, you've played Trepang. <laughs> like, Fear, yeah. it's very close. Yeah, if you played Fear, if you played Half-Life, you've played, like, it's it's in that direction. Mm -hmm. um, and it's all about just momentum, really. Like, mm -hmm. keeping up momentum against, like, enemies and stuff. <laughs> repositioning yourself um just causing havoc yeah uh and i guess uh you know i was gonna recommend yomi hustle but i guess i now have to unfortunately recommend another good game oh fuck. <laughs> oh jeez uh, oh, oh shit yeah. oh fuck. but uh oh uh, yeah um yeah fucking... uh what, what, what's it called yeah uh the only downside that sort of stops Trepeng 2 from um being my absolute game of the year is that uh, they have a lot of fun encounters with like different objectives, like tossing. Um, I think I remember early on you get to like toss. Uh, you have to destroy like a generator, and you toss like fucking barrels into like um individual like pods or something. Uh, while zombies are sort of like swarming you. Mm. Um, but the bosses <laughs> are kind of weak. Uh, mm. just because they don't take full advantage of the havoc that happens when you have a lot of monsters coming at you a lot of like people to kill mm -hmm. um the uh yeah the the boss arena is we're kind of lacking but mm -hmm. other than the bosses the game is phenomenal oh yeah all right uh and finally one more round for our official number one games of the year um on the topic of uh banger fps shooters 
Uh, I have to give it to our legend, The Finals, uh, that, that finally officially released this year. Which I just I don't want to I, I don't want to spend too much time on it because we're 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 got we got a lot of people going around here but just like movement shooters you know if I can there's so many fun ones and and I definitely have a bias towards them as like probably one of my favorite genres of games as of late that I can like put a finger on like Titanfall two Apex all that shit um, and like this is just another amazing entry into that pantheon um, that still offers at the same time like so many different styles of play and such a unique environment to test all of those play styles in because they are they are using this amazing technology that lets them have like actually fully destructible environments like fully uh realizing the potential of the shit that they introduce all the way back in like fucking bad company 2 battlefield right like the concept of levolution or whatever that they fucking coined it in battlefield 4 they had it but like it wasn't really it was more of a gimmick in the battlefield games this game is built around level leveling the playing field liter literally with all your different tools at your disposal and you're on these three player teams that have you know light medium and heavy as class options um they all play slightly you know they all play differently but they all have some similar tools that could help get similar jobs done um but then you can also specialize into like they have every class has like melee options so you can fucking just bash people's heads in if that's the way you want to go or like the fucking light has a sniper rifle um which is hard to pull off, but if you can, it's fucking sick as hell when you do it. Um, and then they have, like, uh, explosives in the environment that can help you level the playing field as well. And, like, just they super... They have a crane! They have a they fucking have a crane. Have a crane! They have they're a crane certified, though. that you're not... Yeah, you're. this is not OSHA-compliant cranes. But you can use it and fucking help it. Use it, it if it's in the right spot. It's usually not in the perfect spot to do the most crazy shit. But there are some moments where, with the stars align, you could fuck things up with the crane. Um, I'm gonna kill someone with that crane but one day. <laughs> every, everything else in that game is just, it feels like it's, you know, all super intentional and, and well done. And, like, only complaint I have against it is, can you hire some real voice actors for the announcers instead of using AI? That's all I'm asking. But otherwise, mwah! Chef's kiss of a multiplayer first person mover shooter. F Finals um, is incredible. Yeah. I just hope it has the, the, the staying power. I hope I think I, I hope it does. I, I think it will. We'll see. But yeah, that is my number one pick for the year. I still haven't played it since release. I played it it's so this... much during the closed beta. Bro, it's your I've son played... and you're abandoning I him. I really I really uh was so fucking like waxing poetic about how much I missed the finals the entire time it was gone. And look at where you are this. now. You're not <laughs> there. Once. I'm, you're I'm gonna at this rate you're gonna miss their fucking like birthday. <laughs> but anyways I'm the only person who doesn't like this game ever in the history of the world, I think. You're you're wilder for that one. I, 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 don't, I don't it's not I don't have fun <laughs> playing it. Oh well, well, so right, play with me. Much. We'll have fun. Great gaming. <laughs> gaming. Alright, Tori, what's your number one pick? I have no idea what it could be. It's a total mystery. Oh, yeah, no, it's total mystery. It's a BG3 sweep. Let's go. Yeah, okay. Uh-huh. BG3. Ooh, I'm not going to spend much time jerking it off. You for oh, taking yeah. that from us. <laughs> yeah, Game of the Year Award winner. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Whoever worked on Baldur's Gate 3 you. is a fucking hack. Oh, they don't understand <laughs> how game must... works at all. Play them off. Play them <laughs> off. <laughs> Play oh, off. Boom. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. <laughs> Get your pseudo armor out of here. <laughs> but like, get in your, all seriousness, get your stinky animations out. Ah, uh, <laughs> in all seriousness, I've got two hundred idle hours in the game and still four hundred actual hours in the game, and it came out not too long ago. I love this game so much. I'm gonna be playing it for years to come. And the fact Insane. that even the developers have said like there are plot lines and things that players are not going to find for years. I, I'm not even surprised because I am every time Jesus. I play, I'm seeing new things every session. Christ. Yeah, and it's, it's such that a good time. Insane. Literally, face it, almost every time I see her online, it's just I Baldur's I, Gate every time. Mm -hmm. so. I think I only have like 62 hours. I have 62 hours in Baldur's Gate. That's all I have. Listen, yeah, you I don't have... know how much time you've spent doing animations for it. Probably You, more you spend that. enough time animating Dwarf yeah. Cock, you get, you get kind of sick of it. 
and you need to put it yeah. aside. <laughs> so it was a whole yeah, month. But like, <laughs> but like in, in all seriousness, like the, the, the game is fucking amazing. Um, and it's one of the first games. Like, I'm I'm pretty notorious for being a genocidal maniac in games. I struggle to be a genocidal maniac in Baldur's Gate, even though so much content is locked behind being an asshole. I I struggle because I love the characters too much. You are you are really bad. <laughs> you are yeah. you are so don't, torn trying to get in fucking Asterian's pants because he's so evil. But you don't want to really you want to be a good noodle. Don't do genocide. It just might ruin the game for you. I'm not <laughs> talking from experience in any kind of way. No, definitely not. Not with no, people not. who are murder hobos, please, and for your yeah. own sanity. Play, play uh, your single player first. Dirt. Oh yeah, I haven't even played any games <laughs> as any of the origin characters yet. That's how much content there is. Is just a custom character. God damn. Oh, <laughs> Lord. Yeah. So much so. gameplay and honorary mention to a uh, King of the Castle that came out this year. Best Twitch extension <laughs> fun I've had ever. King of the Castle. Um, there was actually some like there was a really good community moments there. It was great. Yeah. Good on them. Yeah, that's great. Um, all right, Kobe, what you got? <gasps> so I'm gonna I'm gonna give a caveat. I think my actual number one pick, if if I were to finish the game, it probably would have been <laughs> Alan Wake Alan Wake 2. I think Alan Wake 2 is an incredible horror experience so far, but mm-hmm. we're only a quarter of the way through the game and I am playing it with people and we're very slow to play. So <laughs> I'm about to ruffle some feathers here because it seems like everyone has a goddamn opinion. I need to show you another. I need to send you another video about this later. My number one one pick of the year is fucking Starfield. No, no, no. No, no. No, no. No, I'm not surprised. Tom, I, Tom, fucking, oh my god, you gotta get Mr. Bethesda, uh, fucking, show him on the camera. We know he's got the gun Listen, pointed at your head right now, okay? I will, I will say this much. I understand <laughs> the criticisms of this game. I understand that people d- don't like certain gameplay decisions and designs. That is fine. I liked Starfield. It hit for me. It hit for me at a time that I needed. I am a full believer that media is powerful in a lot of different forms and if you need something in your life at that moment a media piece of media could hit for you i had just been writing a whole bunch of sci-fi shit for my DD campaign i've been in a big sci-fi mood starfield hit star watching the expanse starfield hit like oh, every <laughs> everything that for every like wrong that starfield has followed up with an amazing cot like thing for me like th- this game i think is it's very divisive. I think, like I said, everyone and everyone has an opinion about Starfield for some reason. Even people who don't play the game, uh, I think in the, in in its heart, like it is a Bethesda game. If you don't like Bethesda games, you will not like Starfield. Mm-hmm. But this game hit for me, and I loved every second of it. Like it, hey, I don't know what else. That's your experience. <laughs> that's your experience, it, man. It's your I, number one game. I feel like. I feel like Starfield, I played it the way Mr. Todd wanted me to play it. And as Todd, thank you, Tori. Thank you. Yes, as Todd is pointing the gun to your head, he is feeding you in your brain subconsciously yeah. how you need to play it. And then you follow but, through. But I feel like I played the, the way that Bethesda, like if they were on a wall on a whiteboard saying like, here's like what Starfield is. I feel like I unironically went down that path. Mm-hmm. Um, I died. And I, 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 listen if it's not your cup of tea that's fine but it, in the end like out of all the games it's definitely in my top five of the year is it my top one like i said probably not because Alan Wake two might take it or whenever i get around the bg3 they'll probably take it but starfield was an incredible experience for me. i'm shocked There's that spider-man 2 got on. pushed off your list like you were uh, spider-man 2 is a great story with a subpar open world okay but it really makes you feel like Spider-Man, doesn't it? Like, come on. Two Spider-Man. It makes you feel like two Spider-Man. That's true. It does make you feel like two Spider-Man. Also, I'm not gonna maybe Spider-Man. more. <laughs> the Spider-Man two. Oh, Mark, you're welcome. I'm uh, uh Thank I'm represent- you. representing uh, Xbox here. Uh, stock goes up. Our stock from horse it's, it's around. Official. Oh my god! Official disclosure. Oh, We've got god. the shills in here. But uh, yeah, no, my my opinions do not represent my employer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what was I gonna say? Uh, yeah, it was with Spider Man Two. Like after the discourse with the Game Awards, I do not want to talk about that game ever <laughs> again because mm. that the the community online is wild for Spider Man. But yeah, Starfield, I I still think is is an incredible game in its own right, and 
once like you hit new game plus like everything makes sense and the ending hit incredibly hard for me and it just made me reflect like my decisions in that game in a very interesting way yeah all right pat did you finish starfield because i see you making faces uh I modeled the shit out of it. There you yeah. go. The Bethesda classic. All right. The classic. So, I modeled uh, it. So, uh, the, the first thing that I did in Starfield was boot it up, shoot it, uh, shoot a couple of guns, boot it down, mod it, boot it back up, boot it down, mod it, boot it back up, and repeat. <laughs> I love playing Bethesda games. That's the way. It'd be nice to play one one day. I love <laughs> playing Bethesda games. Oh my god. Someday, someday their Sometimes. their engine will will update. Honestly, also, I, I feel I like. Will... What, Go I was gonna say, sorry. When I, when I play Bethesda games, I feel like it does scratch the game dev itch inside of me to like tune something to all hell from my personal experience. So mm -hmm. it's hard for me to say like if Starfield is a good or bad game because it's a game that ultimately I made. It's <laughs> like, like a platform. Fucking, mm -hmm. It is. It is. Yeah. If if Bethesda made a fucking like if they if they lean into the modding even more and just made their next game like a roblox or a fucking minecraft type beat <laughs> with like just infinite modding abilities it's hard it's hard to make that kind of sandbox trust me but like i mean it's yeah look i love modding games and <laughs> like starfield was really fun to mod i'm not gonna lie um i will say with with starfield they are cyberpunking it uh this year they're they're taking all the complaints and they are adding it into the game they're adding like new traversal methods they're adding like maps finally like all the shit that like had complaints mm -hmm. they are gonna fix obviously you can't like change the quest structure that is just the bethesda quest structure but uh all like the really just the nitpicks that this game had uh mm -hmm. they are going to fix uh, leading up to the dlc so i think it'll it will have its cyberpunk moment well, then I will, maybe I will give it the cyberpunk treatment of waiting for it to, well, I have it on Game Pass, so I can pick it up whenever, really, but I will probably yeah. just wait until more updates are released for it, and then I'll, I'll snag it and, and see how it goes, but, uh, yeah, that's, all right, that's your top pick. What, uh, Mark, what you got for your number one? Have you guys ever been, like, walking down the street, right? No. And you see a guy, and you're no. like... I want to punch the shit out of that guy. Oh wait, yes, actually, never mind. You're, you're, I'm back on board. If you're like that, that's you're gonna love the 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 game I have is my top, uh, Street Fighter Six. <laughs> oh, that was gonna be on my top too. Not we gonna lie. We are at the peak of of fighting games. I, I I have to I have to I I'm a Mortal Kombat gamer. I have been. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, you had a you had a rough year. You had a du I you had a duality of a year so with Street Fighter often. and Mortal Kombat this year. When Street Fighter came out, I got like 120 hours in the time it. Uh, no, not 120. It was like 170 in the time it took from Street Fighter Six to <sighs> Mortal Kombat to release. I have 170 hours in Street Fighter. Mm -hmm. When once Mortal Kombat released, I I was like, you know what? Okay, I'm gonna try to. I'm sorry, Street Fighter. I had a lot of fun. <laughs> I gotta go back to Mortal Kombat. Then Mortal Kombat was ass. I'm so upset. So I went back to Street Fighter. I love Street. This game is amazing. This game is uh, maybe it's because I play the top uh, top two character in the game. Maybe maybe it is. <laughs> maybe. But I also played other characters, and I'm just I'm just gonna say this game is amazing. Uh, maybe not... if I was like a um, like a Kimberly player, maybe I would feel worse about this game. <laughs> nah, JP all the way. Give me. Give me the man with the cape and the staff, and I'm zoning your ass. I'm not playing the fucking game. Neither are you. We just doing there, 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 and just spikes coming up from the ground. You don't know what's going on. Every time you get close to me, I parry. You hit me, I th I throw out two things that hits you. It's amazing. <laughs> this game is great. The styles are amazing. All the all the style that each character has and all the um i really love like the spray paint and all that kind of yeah. uh oh, yeah. like visual style of the game beautiful all the characters feel like it's like the opposite of like flanderization like like you know <laughs> when you like when you make a character boring and they just become one note it's like all these characters have become like vivid and, and like in depth yeah. this is this is a this is the best fighting game that's ever released 
This is the wow. best. This is the best fighting game. You got You got to go play this. That game. is bold. That is I will bold. say. I will say. Um, in agreeing with Mark's very, very, very. Oh my God! Such a spicy take. Oh, Street Fighter Six. It's so good. Oh God! It's so <laughs> hot to like handle. I will say <laughs> that this is probably. It's not single handedly making me uh a huge fighting game fan, but I will say this is one of the best fighting games a beginner uh to fighting games could get into mm. like it has been such a blast getting into fighting games with street fighter 6 um like i get that like there's a lot of uh scariness with like going into like classic controls and whatnot and modern controls help with uh, that accessibility so much yeah i mean hell fucking if you want to like uh just put street fighter on the tv while you're at a party so you can like just get drunk and mash buttons dynamic is there too <laughs> <laughs> fucking, it's a it's cool it's a fun game like f as a beginner as a fucking scrub and mm -hmm. it genuinely makes me want to get better at playing it because it's so hype and so fun to play yeah yeah i i mean on the fighting game scene front i'm still fully dice game pilled i want to get back into guilty gear strive and try out their fucking tag team mode that they announced at the game awards because that sounds sick as hell and i i don't know i i think it i i it shouldn't be the thing that made it for me but like god the fucking soundtrack on that game rips so fucking hard that it like that was the first 2d fighter i actually learned because i was just like i need to keep listening to this music and i need to do cool combos to this um I don't know, and like a six soundtrack does kind of bang it does bang that's bangs too but i i don't know it just like this strive hits me in just the perfect way that that works for me but like i i am so happy for like the fighting you know you know the fighting game scene to have this thing be so fucking polished and like just kick so much ass and i i hope mm -hmm. i'll pick it up too someday i don't know this game is inspired. I want to. I. I, I want to. I really just want to like throw like two hundred fifty dollars in a pot and be like, "All right, we're doing head ass. We're doing head ass you... Street Fighter. <laughs> head ass Street Fighter tournament." You wanna. You I wanna mean... take all the money that you dumped into Mortal Kombat and take it out <laughs> and put it towards this tournament. Listen, I mean, I. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna get my money back probably, but <laughs> if I. Get, if I get time to practice and stuff maybe we can have a good time you know yeah. I, will, I will also say from an art standpoint um it probably has some of the best animations i have seen no, hey, uh, at the very least in the past Apollo, year like at the, like it is it is crazy the amount of like tech that goes into that game because i remember seeing like a lot of the grapples are crazy to watch like how high fidelity and how polished they are the game is just polished to the tits man everybody <laughs> google uh marisa outfit three stop and stop then... stop no, that's we the, gotta we can the... we're so close it's to the, the stream game. being over don't give me it's tos it's in the game all right it's in the game okay Ooh. all right all right yeah that's <laughs> what i'm saying <laughs> All right, yeah. finally, to wrap things up, Pat, what is your game of the year, number one? Uh, well, you know, it could have been Baldur's Gate 3, uh, <laughs> but, you know, I feel like But you, you literally said yourself you only like put, like, a, like 60-something you know, hours into it. Like, I only put 60 hours in it. The, the only game that I really got to say is game of the year, absolutely game of the year, is Dark Horse of the fucking Game Awards, Hi-Fi Rush, baby! Mm -hmm. Hi-Fi Rush is such a clean and polished game i um we were all in the chat and i've said this to um all of y'all in the chat uh i rank a game in my mind at least because there's so many fun games and fun is subjective at the end of the day and yep. there's so many fun games to play throughout this year but at the end of the day it's all about that polish and god fucking damn if hi-fi rush isn't polished like holy shit it is such a clean and focused experience on what it wants to do what it wants to be which is just honestly a fun beat em up rhythm game like yeah and uh, fuck it, it's just every moment in that game you could honestly just take out look at it and just have the best time of your life like you 
cannot have a bad time in that game unless yeah. you're bad at rhythm games in which case i'm sorry that hi i'm matter. realizing as i'm yeah. playing that game that i'm bad at yeah. rhythm games I'm, I'm they, got, they got a good accessibility options for uh, they got they good do. accessibility they options though. and i i also am pretty bad at rhythm games but i'm still having a fucking blast they got white mode it's just so much fun to play it's so much fun to look at it's so much fun to listen to um and beneath the hood uh it is one of the most technically interesting games that i have seen again in the past year uh, i mean the way that they set up their animation systems to sync up to the beats is so fucking cool yeah. like the way that the, it's hard it's hard to make a system that fucking that syncs up to the beat at different bpms and still have clean animations that you can look at it's difficult to make a game like this and it's they knocked it out of the park perfectly like 10 out of 10 i i literally cannot have any notes for this game yeah. it's a phenomenal game that i can't uh stop gushing about even though i haven't finished it <laughs> finish games. well pat you don't finish games so go ahead oh no go on go on I was saying the craziest part about Hi-Fi Rush was it was a shadow drop just out of nowhere. It was like, out of nowhere. A a Xbox was like, "Hey, we I have a direct. Uh, here's Hi-Fi Rush by the people who made The Evil Within. You know that? Yeah. Like, what game. the fuck? Like, yeah. Here's this fun like <laughs> rhythm, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna pick it up, and I'm like, damn. This and it's so cool. like it. I knew going into it that it was not gonna get Game of the Year because there was a shadow drop, and it right. was right. Like, and very, it was so early, early in the year. year. It yeah. Was so early. yeah. I it was a stacked fucking year, but I'm so happy to say that in my heart of hearts, it is it is Game of the Year. Yeah. It no, is. and I think I think the polish metric is a really good one. Like I I think a lot of my like games of all time are like things where I can go to. I'm like there is n all basically nothing else you could polish about it that would fucking you know make this any better and like i think i would probably be fighting for you to put this in my top three if i had played more of it <laughs> and maybe got a little bit better at rhythm games like see like it's 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 been a tough year for game development and it's been a great year for games but a lot of games we have to admit have been coming out in a rough rough state and that's yeah. because again game development has been really we, rough this year we joked about it earlier so, with the fucking ragnarok dlc being better than the whole call of duty campaign right like yeah, it's the, like, the it, probably the biggest game financially of the year is we came talked out about in, how, like some we of the most rushed how, state um jedi fallen order came out in a really rough state or it, it's it and survivor i mean starfield starfield exists oh yeah starfield. <laughs> like, like come on like but like hi-fi rush is literally like Oh my god, I yeah. cannot stop gushing about how just clean it is. Yeah. And like Hot Fire Rush evokes the same feelings I got for different reasons, but it evoked the same feelings I got when Doom Eternal released, which is it's a very polished game that yeah. I have no notes for it. And it's just it hits all the beats that I want in this kind of game. Yeah. Everything, everything is is so intentional and like done with such care and love and like it it shows, you know, everything and like, I, I can't wait like, to play more of it. And I've seen criticisms online. People are like, oh, the voice acting's bad. It's like, no, but that's the point of the game. This game is oh, cheesy. It's, goofy. it's oh, just it's cheesy. Yeah. You're playing yeah. a fucking beat em up rhythm game. Yeah. The voice acting's bad. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> no, the, the game oh, just has God. such a level of charm to it. Yeah. Um, it, it is an incredible game from this year that is definitely slept on. But people yeah. should pick it up. Yeah. If you haven't heard of it, it's, I mean, not to become an Xbox shill myself, but it is on Game Pass uh, along hey, with every Game Pass. Yeah, we're not sponsored. Fucking, we're not sponsored. I do want to get hired by Microsoft someday, but we're not sponsored right now. So, yeah, um, we're not sponsored. <laughs> but yeah, um, and with that, I think we are set for our game of the year discussion. So, thank you all so much for joining us, uh, and thank you all for watching. Um, and if you have picks for game of the year that you want to talk about, uh, this VOD is going to be on YouTube. So feel free to drop them in the comments. And um, here's looking forward to, a, or in the Discord, yeah. Um, subscribe. And so, yeah, like, subscribe, hit that <laughs> notification bell. YouTube oh, Red, man. we got new videos uh, <laughs> coming out every day. On the not day. every day. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. Uh, uh, fucking I mean, stream only in 15 only minutes, minutes but yeah and we're doing another stream in 15 only, minutes only on twitch for simul stream sunday Dante. jesus fucking christ but uh seriously thank you all so much for checking in tuning in and yeah hopefully 2024 will be a another great year for games and hopefully a much better year for game developers 
uh, please treat your employees right and fucking uh, acknowledge uh, their issues and listen to them. But um, yeah, with all that fucking said, take us off the fucking game awards stage. So yeah, crazy. also that Guys. like listen, on, uh, Jeff. we know we know Kratos talked for a little while last year, but like that was kind of fucking silly. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it was even more silly of you know talking off the BG3 devs as they're talking about one of their team members passing, and then they start saying oh wrap it God. up. I didn't even I didn't even notice that that ha- I yeah. what. Uh, yeah, no, no, they were talking about like their team member who passed during the development of this game, and then they were like, "Please wrap it up," <laughs> as they were in the middle. Oh, oh, oh. Yikes! Uh, we didn't do that, so we're better than Jeff Keeley. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe out there, and till next time, a peace out.